We're back with our panel. We brought in two of the big guns from the New York Times today. Edward Wong is a diplomatic correspondent, and Michael Crowley is a White House correspondent covering foreign policy. Good to have you both here. Thanks, Margaret. Thanks, Margaret. Uh, I want to start on what we haven't mentioned thus far in the show, that the president has made a choice to run the intelligence community. He's going to renominate a congressman, John Ratcliffe. Is he actually going to go through and get nominated and confirmed? Well, th that's a big question. You know, President Trump was getting close to uh, nominating uh, Congressman Ratcliffe back in the summer and met so much resistance from senior Republicans in Congress who said, this man is not qualified. He's only been on the Intelligence Committee for a year, may have inflated his resume, and is uh, much more partisan than the people who have held that job. The president pulled back and didn't do it. And the question is now, um, has Ratcliffe changed any minds? There's not a lot of evidence to that, but there may be a little bit of a game going on here because the president has installed Richard Grinnell, his ambassador to Germany, in that job in an acting basis. And because of complicated things that have to do with the, the, how long acting directors can serve, by nominating a new person, even if President Trump doesn't think Ratcliffe can get confirmed, that allows Rick Grinnell to stay in that job for a longer amount of time. There's another theory that Rick Grinnell is even more unpalatable to people in Congress than Ratcliffe, so Ratcliffe may be the more acceptable alternative. So there's a lot going on here, and people are trying to figure out what's real and what isn't. Well, I bring that up first because it gets to some of what we have been talking about today in terms of confidence in professionals versus political choices made for political reasons and confidence in hard fact and in intelligence. Um, Ed, I know you've been following as you always do, uh, you lived in China for so long and you f followed the origins of this outbreak of corona. When you heard uh, the administration this week change its language so many times in describing and characterizing response, um, what did you make of that? And what do you make of what is actually known in terms of what China is sharing with the U.S.? Well, I think that um, everyone would agree that full transparency or um, a large amount of transparency on this virus is necessary, both, you know, to um, push forward with expertise um, on addressing the virus, plus calming public fears over it. And I think when an administration or government appears to be non-transparent on it, then that creates problems. I think that um, the Trump administration really grappled with that this past week uh, when you saw President Trump come out and say it was a new hoax by the Democrats or when and his chief of staff went out and, and said the media is covering this because right. they think it's going to take down the president. Right. And I think that um, they're trying to adjust the language now from what I can tell. But I think that, uh, you know, there's valid criticism of that. And I think if you compare that to the way Beijing reacted, there are some parallels in that. Uh, Communist Party officials, Chinese officials really covered up the start of the virus. And there's a lot of information coming out these days that perhaps it started earlier and that they kept the public from learning about it. We know that one of the key whistleblowers, Dr. Lee, mm -hmm. tried to warn healthcare professionals in a private chat group about it. And then he was um, even taken in by the police because of that and admonished. Yeah. But, uh, Michael, I mean, does the president now have the credibility and, and the trust of the public at a moment of crisis when you need it most. No, that's a huge problem here, Margaret. Think back to what happened when Hurricane Dorian was hitting the United States last summer. President Trump made an inaccurate comment about the hurricane's path and was criticized for it. And then a day or two later, he's holding up a map showing the storm's forecasted path in the Oval Office. And it appears to have been doctored with just the kind of Sharpie pen that President Trump loves to use to sign documents. It really looks like they were altering information they were giving the public to make the president look good, to cover up for uh, a mistake he had made. And President Trump has repeatedly m uh, bungled basic facts, including numbers of victims in the country. Yesterday, he got the gender wrong of the person who died in Washington, although he may have been briefed inaccurately. I will say, Margaret, that I do think that that briefing yesterday was a step in the right direction. Having all those health experts there, right. particularly Dr. Fauci, there were questions about whether he was being muzzled. He said he was not. One of the nation's foremost authorities on these things. And I think President Trump understands he doesn't, he wants the markets to bounce back. The markets want to see that kind of expertise and Trump, uh, expertise and, and, and credibility. And at least yesterday, there was a, a step in that direction. Well, uh, we will see when the markets open tomorrow what they thought of it, but certainly for uh, the public. We'll continue to follow the details of this as we have on Face the Nation.